Hey there, good morning. X-Ray Ed, that's me, coming at you once again with X-Ray Education. Hopefully something that will help you in your clinical practice and maybe even help you as a student. Okay, uh, today I've got my lab assistant with me. Say hello to Boney. Boney, say hi to the folks. All right, Boney's gonna be helping me demonstrate some positioning for just standard PA chest x-rays. All right, so if you would just bear with me momentarily while we get set up and then we'll get started with our demonstration. The reason why we're doing this today, uh, not long ago I was in clinic and shooting some chest x-rays and I started, and I guess I noticed this previously but never really thought too much about it. Um, whenever we're Lining up for a chest x-ray, where do we line up? Well, we want to line up with the mid-sagittal plane, right, so that we're centered side to side. And then we want to line up at about T7, which we've always told people is the inferior angle of the scapula. Okay, well, I started noticing that if I lined up with the inferior angle of the scapula, a lot of times my image is offset, you know, it's a little too low. Um, so I thought, okay, well, what the heck? So I started counting the ribs, and I realized I was shooting at T8 instead of T7. Now, okay, Boney over here is not an exact replica of a human being, but he does do a pretty good job of illustrating this point. So, okay, unlike on a human patient, I can actually see Boney's bones. So if I'm wanting to line up on the mid-sagittal plane, it's pretty easy. All i got to do is look for his posterior processes, and right there they are. Um, on some patients, it's kind of hard to landmark those because they've got a lot of fat back, um, but you can still kind of sort of see. And if you can't feel for any spinous processes, it's no issue. All you got to do is just look at the patient's neck and just aim for the center of their neck because you know their C-spine's got to be in there somewhere and it's more than likely, you know, relatively centered to the, um, to the tissue of the neck. Okay, so I've got Boney up here, but what I really wanted to show you is this. Let me turn on my collimator light. There it goes. Okay, collimator light. See that red laser right there? Okay, I've got that even with the uh, inferior angle of the scapula. But if I go over here and count, okay, T1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that's putting me at T8. So in reality, what I should do is bump this guy, you know, put my um, chest stand up about an inch, and then I'm going to move my, because remember, these uh, thoracic vertebrae aren't that thick, okay, maybe like three quarters of an inch thick to an inch, something like that. They're not that big. Okay, now, see what I've got? If I palpate for this inferior angle, and then I go up like about a finger's breadth, well, okay, I got big fingers. Maybe for you it's like two fingers. But just go up a shade. Now, where am I? Okay, T1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, and you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute now, X-ray Ed. What you're looking at here is just a plastic skeleton. Wonder if that thing's not 100% accurate. Okay, well, good question. Let's go and take a look at some x-rays um, of real patients and see what happened with those. All right, be back in just a minute. Lord have mercy. Okay, um, I know this is some old school flat film looking stuff, so you know, please keep the laughter to a minimum. Okay, now how do you find T1 on a chest x-ray? Well, it's not that hard. If you look, you'll see that the first rib here has got like a really weird shape to it. It's uh, like a C or a, a hook shape. Uh, it's very, very pronounced. So you can generally find that. It's going to be right up here at the apices, and so we're just going to find um, that first rib and then follow it back to where it articulates with T1. Okay, so here goes T1. T1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so here's T7. Well, where's the inferior angle of the scapula? Well, it's here um, between T7 and T8. Okay, so here we could have gone to the angle and gone up a little bit and we would have had a better centering for our x-ray. Um, 
check this one out. Okay, here is first rib. Okay, so here we go. First rib goes to T1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, and where is my scapula? Okay, now on this patient, I think this patient actually has their shoulders hiked up. So what's that, what that's done, since their shoulders are not relaxed, that has pulled the scapula upward. So on this particular image, the, the inferior angle is at T1, I'm sorry, T7. Um, but that's due to the fact that the patient's out of position. You know, they've, sometimes when you tell your patient to take in a breath, they <gasps> take in a breath and then they arch their shoulders up like this. I, I'm not sure why, but some people do that. Um, so as you can see, these clavicles are at a more extreme angle than they normally would be. Okay, so that's not a very good example. Okay, so let's take a look at this guy. Okay, so where's T1? Okay, well here's my rib. I'm going to follow it up. T1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Where's the angle of the scapula? Right down here. If I follow that across, that's going to put me at about T8-ish. Okay, so for this particular patient, what I could have done, I could have gone up a little bit, and then I could have combed down top and bottom, because look at all this abdominal tissue down here. And this is pretty common for chest x-rays. You may notice this in your clinical practice. You, you line it up like you think it's going to look good, and then you take your image, and you've got six inches of abdomen on there. Well, the reason for that is because you're out of position. You've, you've come down too far. You might have just been trying to put like an inch and a half of light over the patient's shoulders, which works fine for some patients, but for smaller patients, that's going to give you, you know, way too much real estate down here inferiorly. All right, let's take a look at one more. Okay, can't imagine why this one wound up in the reject bin. Um, okay, always get your patients to take their necklaces off before you do your x-rays. Just a little safety tip there from, from me to you. Okay, so where is T1? Okay, well, it's up here somewhere. Here's the rib. Follow it up. Okay, here's T1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, where's the inferior angle of the scapula? Down here. If I follow that across, it's going to put me at T8. That's going to put me, um, you know, aiming too low. So what I could have done, once again, since this is a relatively small patient, female I'm guessing, um, what I could have done was bring my central ray a little bit higher and then cone in top to bottom and with no fear of clipping off these uh, angles, these costophrenic angles, because look, I've got like, what, four inches right here of abdomen, plenty of room, you know, I could have... I could have centered better and then combed in top to bottom and side to side, saved the patient a little bit of dose and produced a better image. Okay. Apologies for the shaky camera work. My steady cam rig is on loan to somebody else. Okay, so as you can see, what we're looking at here is the page out of the Bontrager book for PA projection of the chest. Okay, and we all kind of know how that goes. Got the patient up there at the, at the board. Now, what I wanted to draw your attention to is a little bit further down the page. Central ray. Okay, so, sorry. Uh, perpendicular central ray to the image receptor centered to the mid-sagittal plane at the level of T7. Okay, and here's the part that I wanted to show you. Okay, so about seven to eight inches below the vertebral prominence, or, where is it? Yeah, to the inferior angle, inferior angle of the scapula. Okay, so that's what we've been doing. All right, so here's another book. This is Merrill's Big Bible of All Things Radiographic. So once again, we're looking here at PA projection for lungs and heart, chest in other words. Okay, so here we go. Got the dude up there at the board, and we're going to get ourselves um, positioned. All right, now where's that central ray supposed to go? 
Well, what does Merrill have to say? Central ray. Okay, CR should enter at the level of T7. Uh, thanks a lot, Holmes. You've done it again. Okay, now, if we look over here at the lateral projection and look at the central ray location, it's kind of similar. Okay, central ray perpendicular to the IR. Um, Mid-coronal plane at the level of T7 or the inferior aspect of the scapula. Okay, so we've got a couple different sources here that are telling us inferior angle of the scapula. And that's been taught for years. That's how I was trained too. Okay, so what have we learned today, if anything? Well, T7. Where the heck is it? Okay, so you can either come down seven to eight inches from the vertebral prominence. You can also go, if you're doing AP chest work, you can find the jugular notch. Go a hand's breadth and maybe a little more down from the jugular notch. That should put you at about the same level as T7. Or our tried and true method that we all know and love. Palpate the patient's scapula find the inferior angle of the scapula and then provided your patient's shoulders are rolled forward and their shoulders are relaxed down you're going to want to go up about a finger's breadth or maybe a little more from the bottom of that scapula and that's going to put you on the level of T7 so remember for a, quite a few patients I don't know maybe even most patients find the inferior angle of the scapula and then just go up a skosh as my friend Greg used to say just take it up a little notch and that's going to put you at a better centering point for your PA chest x-rays. Now, okay, if anybody's out there and they're in clinic and they're doing chest x-rays day in and day out and you discover anything to the contrary of this, please let me know. Or if you have a better way of centering for chest x-rays, that would be great too. Comment down below and let us know what you do whenever you're in clinic and dealing with patients on a day in and day out. All right, so for x-ray education, this is x-ray Ed and Boney, and we'll see you again next time. Have a great week. All right, bye.